This is the new Utopia Cord. It's a smart e-bike that has built-in GPS, application support, anti-theft, and even GPS navigation with its large screen that it has. Our tires here are 700C by 400C, and they are from a brand called CST, the tires. On the sidewall of the tires, you will notice there is a reflector strip, which is great for safety. We've got a rear tail light here that does even have projectors incorporated into it, like their previous model, but here we don't get the left and right indicators. It's more just for, for aesthetics and to increase our safety and visibility when you're riding at night. The rear hub motor is 36 volts, 250 watts maximum, with 45 newton meters of torque. The bike's kickstand is sturdy, it doesn't rattle around. And I do like the look of this frame. Now the paint finish here, this white, has a metallic finish to it, so it sparkles a little bit. It's more of a pearl paint job. There are no visible welds with this frame. It's an excellent finish to it, and the bike does weigh 21 kilos. Now our seat post here, you can raise and drop the height of it, so it caters for riders from 160 centimeters to 195, the cord. The Cord X is a smaller model that they do have. Now in order to raise and drop the seat here, you need to use an Allen key, so there's no quick release mechanism with this bike, so you can't swap over riders on the go unless you take an Allen key with you. The seat has decent padding in it, and so far it has been comfortable, no complaints from me. The Cord has two bottle holder mounting points here and here. For brakes, we've got a known brand here, Tektro. They are 160 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. And yes, we do have a quick release on the front hub, but not the rear hub. This bike does have mounting points for a front basket, bike rack, and mud guards. The cord uses a more traditional swept-back handlebar style, which is very comfortable, and it means when you ride, you are in the upright position. The brake levers feel really good thanks to the hydraulic system they're using and not a cable pull system. And our grips here, they are lock grips with this synthetic leather. They don't move about, which is great. Now we have a Shimano Revo shift, which is like a grip shift system. So you simply just twist up to go up the gears, twist down to go down the gears, and it works really well. Unlike their previous bike, we don't have the carbon belt drive system, but a typical chain here. So this chain is from KMC, that's a known brand and the Shimano Acera is El Duralia. So great to see we don't have the entry-level Dior like all the other brands I typically review. The front crank has a alloy chain guard around it, and these pedals, they are not from Welgo. They don't seem to have any brand on them. Plastic pedals, they do the job. This bike does have nice little touches like internal frame routing of our cables. So our battery pack here is 352 watt hours using Samsung cells and it quickly charges in only two and a half hours. It's locked into place with a key, so you simply just need to unlock it here, flick the little switch, and this battery then drops right out. So very easy to charge it in the office or at home. So here we have our little controller here, this joypad. So pressing in the middle, that's our bell. It's quite loud actually, the speaker that's built into the main display unit here. And then our pedal assist levels, just to, to go up and down them. So we've got zero, no pedal assist at all, eco number one, number two, number three, and then if you press and hold up, it goes over into the turbo mode. And we've got left and right going through the screen here. So this screen is really nice and bright. You can see it in direct sunlight. Now it doesn't shimmer like this in person, it's just on camera it's doing it. So right here we have our fingerprint reader. So yes, there is fingerprint unlocking. The time is displayed here. I've got weather information, so it's showing me that it's gonna be cloudy and my signal because it's got a built-in eSIM and 4G modem. That's how it has its connectivity. It's also got GPS on it. So it's constantly transmitting the signal of where it is so you can always track it. And that is how it has the anti-theft functions that are built into it. Now the screen will show your speed ride here, remaining battery life, and what pedal assist level you are in. You can also issue the bike various voice commands by pressing and holding the main button. Light on. Light on. And now it's turned the light on. The cord uses a torque sensor instead of a speed sensor, and this is so much better than the speed sensor because it gives you that power delivery straight away. It is very smooth, and I'll demonstrate that later on in my riding tests. They also do have their carbon fiber bike, Utopia, and this is the first model I reviewed from them. It's got a carbon belt drivetrain. It does have some downsides to it because it's got no gears. The motor's actually weaker too, 
it's 35 newton meters versus the 45 newton meters we have with the cord. The cord has the gears. It's about a thousand euros cheaper. But of course, this bike being carbon fiber, the frame is a lot lighter. It's only about uh, 16 kilos versus here, the 21 kilos. Very quickly now, our application, it's called Utopia. I've got it here on Android, but you can get it with iOS. So you can see your previous ride and all the other rides which are recorded in here. Now, because the bike's got its own modem built into it, eSIM, it's transmitting that information when you finish the rides to the app, to their servers, and you can click on that and get a bit of information. So I rode 15 kilometers, one hour and six minutes. You can see the CO2 saved. Uh, calories and average speed was 13 kilometers. I paused a few times to take a few photos and whatnot, but I'll be riding this bike a lot more just to gauge a course on what kind of battery life that I can get out of it. Monthly, yearly, all of that information's in here. We do have a Utopia community where you can post your rides, photos, all that sort of stuff. And this menu here is very good. So this one in the middle is the bike, the bike settings. So very important here. Now you need to be paired out with Bluetooth. The bike is just out of range from where I shoot and I'm not gonna lift it up the stairs here, but you get the idea. We've got our light, alarm mode, beep, power. Uh, here the volume of it, sounds, fingerprint reader to set that up for the bike. Speaker, so yes, you can pair up your phone to the built-in speaker and microphones, handle calls through it, whatnot. Advanced settings here, firmware updates about eSIM. So I think when you first get the bike, you got the eSIM for one year. Mine is expiring in March the 20th. Okay, next year. So that's good. I've got about a year with it. And update. At the time of this video, I do have the latest firmware, which is 1.2.3. So good to see they push out firmware updates. You've got this ride here, which will tell you exactly where your bike is. You can locate it on the map. And again, it's pinging their servers. So that's handy. If it does get stolen, you'll be able to locate where it is until someone removes the battery, that is. If you cut the power to it, of course, then it can't transmit. And then you just got user information there too. You can see your writing stats. So I'm at four hours and 20 minutes so far and a lot more information in there too. So it's an app that's reasonably useful, but for me, this is the best page, of course. All the settings and the firmware updates for the bike itself. Road test time. So I think this is a fantastic looking e-bike. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I think it looks really nice. Now the seat post, unfortunately, we cannot just on the fly release this. No quick release. So you need an Allen key with you if you're going to change riders halfway through your ride. But most people wouldn't. And once you lock it into place, it's not going anywhere. The bike is super comfortable to ride. Now we've got a torque sensor with it. So as soon as you put it into the pedal assist level one and above and start to pedal, it gives you that power straight away and it is very smooth power delivery now the bike because it does have the sweat back handlebar style you are riding really upright so your back's not arched over you're not going to get a sore back with this bike here and it makes your visibility a lot better too and just so smooth now the gear change is really great i like this revo shift here they do have so a grip shift style so easy to go up and down those gears and the shifts are nice and clean, no problems at all with them. The power delivery from the torque sensor is very smooth and it's pretty much instant. It's not like speed sensors, you don't need to wait at all. The motor assists you up to 25 kilometers per hour and then it cuts out. That is the, the law here. So it's EU legal, this bike of course, 250 watt motor, up to 25 kilometers per hour. Now because the gearing on this is very good, I love the high gear that I can go right up to the eighth gear and cruising along on my own pedal power then, I can quite happily get up to around 30, 31 kilometers per hour. So great for city commutes and on the road like now. Drive test now, I am in the maximum pedal assist level and I have it in the lowest gear course on the first gear. Now this is pretty easy, but about here it starts to get a little bit steeper. It's about 20 degrees this climb. I'm having to put a little bit of effort in, but this is so much better than their first model. Their first carbon fiber bike, yes, it's lighter. This is 21 kilos, but it has no gears. It's got that carbon belt drive, but with the gears here, I can happily do this climb. So what happens if I turn off then the pedal assist? I'll put it into zero. Ooh, you feel it. You definitely feel it, but I can still do this climb just, but I'll certainly get fit doing this with no battery or the pedal assist off. 
And then it wouldn't be one of my e-bike reviews without our emergency braking test. So from the white post here, full on brakes at 30 kilometers per hour. And I made it just before this post here. It's pretty good, 160 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes from Tektro, so a known brand. I actually have Tektro brand brakes on my Trek Rail 5 and they work really well. And they are just as good here. Very good braking performance. What about our range then? So their claim is you can get up to 120 kilometers. That's quite a lot. Now I'm looking at only around about 75. With my current riding, I weigh 82 kilos and I've been going around and up some little small climbs too, which is gonna have a bit of an impact on the battery. So overall, this is a fantastic bike from Utopia. I think it's better than their first model. I love the cord here, the fact that it's got the eight gears, the grip shift style shift there is was really good. Those smooth, those shifts, excellent. And it's not the most powerful, 250 watts and the 45 newton meters of torque. But of course we've got the gears and that really does help with those climbs. But if you've got very steep climbs to go up, you have to put a little bit of effort. The finish, the style of the frame is excellent. It's a very modern bike. We've got all those smart features built into it. So the GPS, the voice commands, the application, anti-theft, it's all there, even weather, and it's got the 4G connectivity with the eSIM, which when you buy the bike, you get for one year, but I think later on you do have to pay a subscription fee if you want to continue on with that 4G eSIM, which is normal. That's going to have a, an, a cost attached to it. Brakes work fantastic, very smooth, comfortable ride. Swept back handlebar style means you're riding along very upright, you're not leaned, leant over, you're not gonna get a sore back, and I, I think this is a great bike. Yes, it is a little more expensive than some of the other e-bikes out there, but it's definitely worth it if you want the GPS or the smart features, anti-theft. The only real con for me with this bike is the battery, when it's always connected because of the 4G, it will slowly drain that battery because it's transmitting the GPS signal, it's transmitting its location, and that slowly saps away at the battery. So if you leave the bike for about a week and you come back to it, don't get a shock to find out, a uh, big surprise, that you've lost half your battery uh, because of that. So I do recommend you unplug the battery if you're gonna be storing it away for a while. That is really uh, the only con to this wonderful e-bike here, the Utopia Cord.